tell until it looks like we're live. It's really tricky sometimes when you click. Here we go. Okay, we're live. Yes, great. Definitely live. Hi, guys. Thank you so, 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 so much for um, joining us this evening, this Sunday night, if you're in the UK, or Sunday deep night, if you're in Europe or beyond towards the east or if you're just in the middle of your day towards the west thank you so so much for joining us um, i'm james bradley i'm one of the co-founders of the liftoff global network i'm joined at the moment with uh, pauline alexandra and andrea who we'll get down to in a second but these are the guys that have won the manchester liftoff film festival um, they won the online section of the film festival and this is their round table so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through each film individually and talking to each of the artists discussing their process where they went where they went right where they feel things went wrong and also talking about the kind of stories that they had along the way so so anything that we kind of like feel would be really uh, beneficial to filmmakers and stuff um we've currently got a really vibrant chat room i'll just click on my little things here to help me go to chat rooms and stuff we've got uh, claire richardson in the chat room we've got lucas we have rowan kerr we have natalie we've got max we've got tolovy film we've got um lucas again lauren lily dixon um, big shout out to all you guys that have come here to say hello to us and to join in today with this incredible round table. It's the first of its kind, the first that Liftoff's ever done and certainly the first I'm pretty sure a film festival's ever done, I think. I'm not sure. I'd like to hold that claim, but we'll see. Um, we'll have to find out. I'm sure someone will correct us in the comments. Um, so yeah, basically this is this is all about getting people together and just making sure that during these ridiculous times that we're actually, we're actually still collaborating, still working and still making stuff happen. Um, I'm a massive Massive believer in collaboration. I'm a massive believer in network, and I think that the more the more that we join together as a force, as a powerful powerful force at this level of filmmaking, then we stand a better chance of our filmmakers, the real artists, actually making money from the work that they're creating now, not the work that they're going to create later. It there is an industry at this level, and there are there are audiences, and I feel like with more with more push and more more focus onto the artists, we can actually generate a genuine indie film movement that will enable filmmakers like the guys that we're going to meet today to actually earn money and and pay their their mortgages from the things that they love to do, which I'm sure some of them are already doing, but doing it more. That's the most important thing. Um, yeah, so just to talk about a few things that are happening this week. So if we just click on through. So we've got um, Vimeo On Demand starting tonight at 10 p.m. We have the first time filmmaker sessions. That's for April. So we're, that's actually starting literally tonight. We've got um, a features program and we have five other programs of shorts so it's features and it's shorts all from around the world all first-time filmmakers um, that's available to rent on Vimeo on demand there's a link in the description below go check it out seriously some absolutely bangers this year some really really great films for the April edition of first-time sessions I highly recommend you guys go and check it out also this Friday we have the workshop I'm gonna be running a workshop Friday live from 12 p.m. It's going to be a, a crowdfunding workshop, so the best crowdfunding strategy for your film projects, um, the use of either Indiegogo or Kickstarter or all the others. Um, something that's really dear to my heart and something that I've learned a lot from from other filmmakers over the years, especially especially from the kind of things that they've done that, that have worked. So when crowdfunding's worked really, really well and how that's actually how that's actually kind of like happened and formed a formula for, for uh, filmmakers to actually get their work off the ground using crowdfunding and not crowdfunding like asking your parents and your friends and your family for money. I mean crowdfunding where you're actually building an audience and using that audience to help build your work forward and then help you get to bigger and better producers later. So definitely check that out. That'll be Friday, 12 p.m. BST. We run workshops every Friday. You can check it out in the playlists from our channel. We've got the how-to playlist and the workshop playlists go and have a look at those and check those out also on the liftoff network page um, I can hear my daughter crying in upstairs I'm not sure if you guys can hear that or not but uh, this the the, the, uh, the beauty of being at home yeah she's little and um, this is her bedtime um, yeah, so we've got free production launch works, workshops happening um, via our website these are pro um, producer producer led production production launch workshops so they are exactly what they are on the tin they are, there are a a series of workshops that go over the, over a period of four weeks that literally tailor tailor they are tailor-made to filmmakers that are creating more and more work 
Um, really, 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 really good for people to get to jump on board with that and uh, crack on. Please excuse the background noise at the moment. We actually have our filmmakers in in the studio right now. So every time I say in the studio right now, in the online studio right now, I'm killing flies as they're going past me. I shouldn't actually, but yeah, they keep getting in my face. Um, yeah, so let's meet them now actually whilst we're whilst we're uh, moving through. So yeah, definitely check out those workshops and let's see how everybody's doing. So hi guys, you're currently live. You're on the screen Hi. right now. Hello, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. So if we start with Andrea at the top, Andrea, if you'd like to say who you are, what you do, and uh, why you're here. <laughs> yeah, I'm Andrea, I'm a director from Rome, and maybe we won the online festival from Manchester, so we, we're happy. And that's why I maybe I made nine out of 10 my short movies, so this is why I'm here. Great. And uh, Pauline, would you like to say hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so to introduce me, uh, I am the director of Nearby Memories, and uh, I'm very happy to be here with you uh, tonight. So thank you for for all of your organization. It's yeah. great to ha great to have you with us, Pauline. Great to have you with us. We can't can't wait to go through the the process of your film. It's going to be great. And uh, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Alex Keelan, and I'm the writer of Made of Stars, um, a film that we we shot in Manchester. That we were thrilled won the um, Manchester Lift Off um, Short Film Festival. Great. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Okay, cool. So here we are. We've got the Made of Stars poster just underneath here. And then we have the Nearby Memories and then we've got 9 out of 10. Um, we'll start off first of all just by kind of starting with Made of Stars. Now was, as I click through this link for you, Alex, what's going to happen is the film's going to be playing in the background. Um, yeah. If you guys have currently got YouTube open, you should be able to see. I would mute it as well if I was you, just to make sure. Um, and if anybody does have any, um, I, I can kind of hear a little bit of background noise from me talking. So if you've got the, the, the speakers on, if you're not using headphones, if you could just turn your speakers down just a little bit, that might be helpful, if that's okay. <laughs> Sorry to, it's just the, the way that it goes. This, these streams can be quite 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 uh, tricky sometimes. So let's move on to Made of Stars. So here we go. We've got Made of Stars. So it's the, the film starting up as we speak. We've got the, the hands being shuffled. And Alex, do you want to talk us a little bit through about what Made of Stars is actually about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's essentially about hope. Um, that's the idea that I, I was interested in in the beginning. Um, and it came from a bit of a personal story. My, my uncle um, was diagnosed with terminal cancer about four years ago and he only had a couple of weeks to live. And mm -hmm. obviously he was really distraught. And I went to visit him. And then I went to visit him a couple of days afterwards and a nurse had been around a McMillan nurse and she'd basically given him um, false hope, um, but it, it lifted his spirit so much, it was irrelevant whether it was false hope or not. Um, so I uh, wanted to explore that, and I decided to do it through a tarot card reader, um, because I find that really, really interesting, a really interesting world. Um, and then with short film, it always works really well if there's a twist at the end. Um, and so I wanted the narrative to be that you felt that people were looking to this tarot card reader for hope and support and help. And actually she was getting it from them. That was the twist at the end that, you know, all the whole the whole time she was trying to get something from them. Great, great. And, and is this is this something that that. That, um, so that the, the main character is, you say is based on your uncle's kind of experience, right? Slightly. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. Slightly from there. Yeah. And it, what about the, the choice of characters that you chose? So, Alex, you were the writer, weren't you, of this short yes. film? So the, the, the decisions yeah. of the different characters going through different sections and finding themselves in certain points where they would phone up this clairvoyant that was dealing the cards, the tarot cards. What was what? Why chose? Why did you choose those specific characters in particular, and why give them those certain situations? Well, um, I was asked to write a short film um, a while ago, um, and I, it, I started to. I used this premise to explore it, and they asked me to write three female lead, three female characters, and one male character. Right. So that was the beginning of the process for the characters I decided to write, and I wanted them to all be different and to um, 
so there was one that was really dark and there was one that was slightly humorous um but it, it was more that they'd been quite prescriptive with yeah. that they wanted three three women and a man basically <laughs> yeah so they, they they felt that there was what a, a niche in the market for it for a short with three women and a man well the people who asked me to do that didn't actually like take the script they didn't pick it up oh right yeah which which was weird and so i just put it in a drawer for a few years okay. and then i had a i had a play on um a couple of years ago in manchester and the producer darren was the lead um in that play yeah. and i bumped into him in manchester about two years ago uh, outside a coffee shop and he said oh I, I really want to make a short film he said you haven't got anything have you and oh, I sent great. the script over, yeah, and I sent the script over to him and I said, look, it's a bit weird and it's quite dark. <laughs> and he, he just messaged back and he went, I love it. Oh, um, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Oh, that's and great. Then that, yeah, and, and then we were really lucky because the team he, he pulled together were fantastic. You know, we had no budget at all. Um, but he said he, he thinks that everyone gets um, one film when they can call in all their favours, and this yeah. was the film. Great, great. Um, I'm just gonna just gonna pause for a second whilst we're talking about this. I'm just wondering if any of you guys have got, if you, all three of you have got headphones at all that you could pop on at all, because we're getting a little bit of feedback through the through the system. Don't worry if you haven't. It's totally, it's it's absolutely fine. It's just it's just it just if they're to hand, if you have them at all. If not, don't worry about it. No problem. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So we've got Andrew going to look for them. So that's okay. So Alex, talk me through a little bit more. Then, if you've got, if you've got like a um, a kind of plan with this film, do you want it to go on further than the than the festivals? Is there any particular kind of plan with the production company? What's your What's your vision with this so far? Well, um, it's in. It's been submitted to a few of the festivals that we're waiting to hear back from. Yeah. Um, and I know that um, Darren's company, Ludovico, uh, currently um, developing another film. So he's working with a writer that's attached to Leeds Playhouse yeah. on a film about um, men's mental health, and he's been doing that for the past six months. So that he's that's the next project that he wants to work on. Okay, great. Well, that's a fantastic that's a fantastic topic, definitely one that we've 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 had this we've had um, a lot of topics come through recently. It's quite interesting when you run a film festival because certain certain things hit the zeitgeist and like lots of people end up sort of making different 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 um, different types of content based around the same kind of stories. And it's it's yeah. really remarkable the kind of things that come out of that. So so men's uh, men's depression and, and mental health issues mainly. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, it's it's strange about um, our film being in this festival during this time because lots of people have contacted me and Darren um, saying that it feels really timely with, with what's going on at the moment. So yeah. you've got a woman that's stuck in a windowless room who's wanting to go out and wanting to have contact with people. And she talks a lot about the sun and the trees and I, 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 and so many people were saying it really resonates with people's experiences at the moment. Gosh, definitely. Yeah, without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. I mean, she is, she's in, she's in the hospital bed, isn't she? Like, mm. Yeah, sort of isolated. It was yeah. a really well lit scene, I thought. I felt like the, the way that it just looked empty, like no one yeah. around, just her in, in a ward. I mean, I don't know yeah. what's worse, being in a room on your own or being on a ward on your own. I mean, I know. It, would just be, it would just be terrible. But um, so just talk me through that kind of that, that end scene a little bit. The, the, the stage direction, was that something that you had written into the script yourself prior to that? Was that a director's choice? Um, well, I, I did write into the script that we didn't see who she was until the end. Yeah. So um, um, it was a really collaborative process. I had lots of opportunity to talk to the director um, about the script and about the vision that I had um, and then he worked really really hard on that scene and Darren was saying that um, that was the most difficult scene um, and Gareth storyboarded the whole thing and our um, DOP was very very experienced so that's why it shot so beautifully but he was really mindful about um, making sure that the reveal was done um, in a way that had the most impact at the end. Um, another thing that, because I wasn't on the shoot, but another thing that I found out when I was chatting to Darren the other day was that um, all of the other scenes, that that actress, that she's brilliant, Julie, um, went to everybody else's scene and was literally on the phone to them, off out of shot, 
for everyone else's scene to make it more to, to support them through the emotion of it all and i didn't know that beforehand Fantastic. I know, I know, bless her. Yeah, really good. It's great when you meet people that are like that, especially actors, because it's it's not a lot, a, a lot of the time actors don't necessarily understand. I mean, a lot of them do, and they're the ones that work all the time, but some of them don't understand necessarily the pressures that are involved on a film set for everybody involved. And yeah. You, I think that it's it's so important we've always said this to, to actors that, that exist in the film spheres at this level i'm i'm, I'm an ex-professional actor so i can definitely talk from oh. experience i used to i used to be that guy and then right. i changed my i changed my attitude quite quickly and it, and it switched all of a sudden i was like i kind of want to work behind the camera that sort of happened quite quite quickly but I do feel like the, the more the more that you can get actors to understand the whole process from from beginning to end, the more you actually get to see the artist in the actor. Because yeah. the actor can can help bring out much more much more creativity within parts. I've, I've always thought that actors that have a say in in the way a, a shot is set up, actors that have a say in the way that a scene is laid out, all these different things really contribute towards their characterization and their embodiment of the character. It can yeah. be really important to be like an actor being very comfortable with switching on a light, for example. When an actor switches on a particular light, it's the it's if they switch that light on every day for all of their life, they have a relationship with switching that light on. And I know it's very Stanislavski, but it's it's certainly something that I've I've always noticed, and you kind of see that sometimes, especially in films like not films, but like TV shows like Hollyoaks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. An actor walking into their house and trying to find a light switch and not actually knowing where it is, but in post production they've missed it out, and you suddenly realise that actually this per this isn't this person's house. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of that going on. Well, the, we were so lucky because the actors were amazing, and Gareth had a really good relationship with all of them because Manchester's quite a, a small. Um, scene really so we all knew each other um and i think you can really tell that everyone was really invested in the film yeah, um i think that really comes through great stuff fantastic and do you do you feel that um there were any if there was anything after watching the film do you feel like there was anything that you wish had been had been um done differently or any approaches that would be different well yeah but i always feel Tricky like that's a writer <laughs> Oh yeah, and it's it's more the writing. So there's scenes that I'd have made sure to have taken a bit of the dialogue out of. And actually, um, when I saw the final cut, they'd moved some of the scenes around in the edit, um, and it really worked. Oh, that's good. It, right. Yeah, because I have had other films made where it's not been as collaborative and it's not gone as well. Um, so um overall i wouldn't change much but i might have stripped out a couple of lines that's all yeah yeah and were, were you present for the shoots were you there on the shoot days no no yeah. they invited me but I've, I've got two kids and a couple of part-time jobs oh, so tell me about <laughs> really it. I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got a 19 month old daughter and um yeah it's impossible to to commit so much time at the moment when you've yeah. got a child um, well, I tell you what, it's, they've done a great job with it. I think that it's, I, yeah. I really feel like the script disappears, which is always a good thing. The script yeah. needs to disappear in, in a film. And, and I think that that's, that's really great. Um, no, they were brilliant. I was thrilled. I was so happy. Oh, good. And, and are they going to be using your knowledge of the, the guy that's doing all the coke in the room to kind of get the, the, the male, the male <laughs> angle for the, next, for the next piece? I don't know. I don't know. You'll have, you'll have to ask him that. Oh, okay, fine. Well, maybe he's, maybe that he's wasn't, in the chat That room, wasn't my it. expert knowledge, but if I'd live in. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm a bit quiet, apparently. So my voice is too quiet. Let me turn my gain up. Here we go. I'll turn my gain right up. That's annoying. You guys can hear me okay though, can you? Yeah. Oh, damn yeah. it. Okay, so let me turn this mic right up. There we go. There we go. Hopefully that'll be better. Um, okay, good. Well, I'm glad. I hope I haven't been too lost on the people's ears because I've been saying the most important stuff. No, I haven't. <laughs> that was you. That was you, Alex, by miles. So it's totally fine. Um, Great stuff. So yeah, I mean, what's what's next for you then, as a, as an artist? Where where are you going next? What are you doing next? What's your what's your plans? I'm um, developing a TV pitch um, at the moment, uh, and so I'm working on that when I can. Yep. You know, in between looking after the kids, but I'd really like to have my own television 
series. So that's okay. what I'm working towards. Okay, excellent. Well, that's fa- sounds fantastic. That sounds really, really good. And what's the um, what's what's the sort of premise of the TV series? Are you keeping your cards to your chest, or oh, don't mind the pun with Made of Stars? But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always say the stars aligned for that film. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm into puns. Um, <laughs> and, and there's two actually. One is a suffragette idea. Yep. Great. Um, as a but as a comedy, um, and then the other one is um, kind of a northern working class teenage love story set in the 90s um but with a few like, like this is england Ooh. maybe maybe slightly shane meadows yeah. fantastic <laughs> but yeah it'd be female, great female perspective it'd be female yeah. driven yeah mm, brilliant okay cool so 90s 90s manchester blackpool 90s blackpool <laughs> yeah. whoa whoa there's a lot of material. Oh like my goodness! I, I discovered, I discovered alcohol and all the wrong things in around '96, between '96 and '98, I guess. And my my father had a had a uh, had a bar up in Manchester, had a pub in Manchester, and my, my me and my twin brother would always go there for the summer holidays. Between what the ages the of the, the pub was the it was the Crown Inn, which is now called the the Deansgate Arms or the famous Deansgate or something. Right. something like that it's called the i think it's called the dean's gate but it's on it's on um oh what's that big long road dean's gate <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's on dean's gate it's on the dean's gate road all right cool well alex it's been lovely chatting with you there i hope you can join oh, in with the rest you. of the stuff when we move on to the next film um which we're going to do we're going to do right now which is nearby memories by pauline maru is it maru or maru how do you pronounce your surname pauline uh moreau 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 yeah. sorry i apologize i'm <laughs> awful when it comes to reading names and then saying them back they always sound so different in my head and i think i'm saying them really good and then i'm not um okay so pauline tell us tell us about this film where did it come from what was what was the idea behind it um the idea um it's um the film speak about um transgenerational psychology uh it's that idea um when that you the history of your grandmother or grandparents are an impact on your life and so right. olivia is uh, in that trouble and she look for her place uh, in the society so the boat trip in the movie is quite similar to uh, an initiation journey uh, these trips allows olivia to imagine her grandparents and discussing with his grandpa and also she remembers uh, of their memories, their past memories. And uh, finally, at the end uh, of the trip, Olivia decides to stay on board. That means that she had fun in her place in the society. So it's um, um, when I read the script, I felt a um, huge emotion. And uh, I think it's an it's very exciting to direct this project because the um, the dramaturgy is less important uh, that the um, that the emotion of the character so and the main character so that's why um, it's uh, a little bit complicated for some people i think but uh, it's um, it's uh, a very interesting exercise it's to direct uh, this sh- sort of uh, of film yeah it's excellent it's excellent we we we've um we we've we found it very very interesting it's it's got so many different tones and it and it takes it takes I, cu- I couldn't I couldn't work out what was happening in between certain points but I really really enjoyed trying to discover what was going on and I love I love it. I think it was really well acted. I think it was really well. It was like a fly on the wall of, of relationships, a fly on the wall of discovery of, of relationships. And, and it, and it, and it was, it was ambiguous. And I really liked what Alex was saying just, just previously about how, how films have to have that kind of a- aspect of mystery to within them, especially short, short film content. And this had tons of that. And I, 
I re it really kept it stayed with me. I've been thinking about it a lot since watching it, trying to figure out who was what, where was what, what was the ideas behind behind her motivations. The guy that called her, he called her boring, didn't he? The boyfriend or something that she's with. She was dancing, and he said something about her dance moves or something. He like cut her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, this is this is the scene right now. Actually, we're seeing the scene right now on the screen. Sorry, yes. Yeah, it, um, there are many things to be um, the, um, the transfer of the memories and the boat trip. And we try to, to create, um, to create, um, uh, to create uh, some, um, how do you say, um, the boat uh, will be um, must have an impact uh, of the memory scene, yeah. and um, it's probably um, in the in the direction and in the script you you make uh, some trans um, to to pass uh, one word to another word. So. Sorry, it's not very clear. No, no, it makes, um, makes perfect uh, sense to me. <laughs> I hope it does to others as well. No, it's great. Keep going. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, um, Olivia is very, that, that means the, this person who look for a place. And uh, I think it's, um, modern problematic for many persons um, not to uh, have a, a problem with uh, her grandfather's uh, uh, history but to look for a place in the society and uh, the this film um, this film tell about an emotion and I think it's the most important um, we tell uh, with the director of photography and we say it's interesting because this movie don't exist in another support uh, that uh, movie support. Yes, yeah. So it's interesting for that and uh, we, we work to in that, in that way to, to stay in this one huge emotion. So finally um the script is not uh, so important to um if you feel the emotion yeah yeah okay um it's clear probably no no it is no it t totally <laughs> is no it really is it's fantastic i think that the the um the 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 it, the characterization of it, the way that you had the 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 um, the relationships and everything happening at all at once, and the and the way that you used these emotional metaphors, I think were really really clear. Um, the bit the the piece at towards the end when she looks in and she sees the window and she sees the 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 man putting the necklace around the lady's neck. But the fact that you that you give that such gravitas without really delivering exactly what it is or why it's happening, I think is I think is really interesting. And I think that's that's something that I think a lot of people will get will get a lot of there'll be a lot of conversations built around that. And because it's shot so incredibly beautiful and because it looks so good and it just the acting is so subtle. And we're just currently looking right now at the young girl and the and the and the elderly man at the the old the old soldier on the boat right now as they sit there and just the the silence the fact that there's hardly any dialogue in the first sort of like three to four minutes they don't even talk and then it's just it the tension it's it's really emotive it's really emotionally driven and it's it's interesting and that's you know it's it's a very it's a very high art piece in my, in my opinion and I, I i thoroughly enjoyed it and i love I love asking questions of arts, and and um, I think what you're saying is absolutely bang on. It really is an emotional kind of um, an emotional like uh, microscope. You're kind of looking in at the at the emotional aspect of everything, and if you draw back, you suddenly see that there are relationships and situations and circumstances, and you want to know more. So um, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved all three. They're great. And I am uh, the 
the actors are so so uh, talented. Uh, yeah. I love uh, I love work with us. Uh, it was so so exciting and. Uh, how did you uh, find How did you find the actors? Yeah. How, how did How did you How did you um, get the actors? How did you employ them? How did you find them? Ah, um, I work with many years with um, the young man who called uh, Patrick Dion. Yeah. And um, uh, he have a big, big um, uh, space to. Um, they know a lot of uh, actors. So oh yeah, a, a he, big network. Yeah. And yeah. Um, he told about. Uh, um, Sasha Kimion, who, um, which uh, played uh, Olivia, and uh, for David Clavel, is the, the ex-teacher of the uh, theatre to uh, Sasha and Patrick. So it's uh, a big family because uh, they they know us very well. Um, Patrick and Sasha are in couple in their real life, so ah. it was so exciting to to work with the, this uh, artistic atmosphere. And um, for the little history, um, the history of the project is funny because we want to to make a film um, in one month. So. Um, at the beginning, we are two screenwriters uh, who wrote two scripts, and uh, they have the obligation to use the the, the casting and uh, some uh, some many sets uh, he has. And uh, after we all the crew read um, have reading the, the script, and we have chosen uh, one script and. Uh, we turned uh, the movie in one week, approximately. Whoa! So, um, it was um, a sort of artistic bubble or artistic yeah. atmosphere. We we are together and we, we made a film together. And Great. Uh, this family uh, sort of community of work is so, so exciting and very, very... Um, uh, difference when you wor work like that. So yeah. I, I think when we, uh, we are with the actors in, they are yes, a little community during all the all the stage. Fantastic, the great. Well, we just saw the scene that I mentioned about the necklace being put around the, around the the neck of the uh, of your of your of the grandmother, right? I guess is that is that the is it the yeah. grandmother? Yeah, yeah. So um, the necklace being put around the neck there and going through the thing. So it's cool. We're now we're now seeing the smile on the boat with the cigarette. Very cool. Very cool. Such an interesting such an interesting <laughs> film and such an interesting concept. And I love the fact that you're a troop. Um, we call it a troupe where it's like a bunch of actors and directors and writers all working together. Um, they're always the most successful. Uh, you keep the people that you that you trust, that you know are doing incredible work, that are artists that speak the same language as you on set, that speak the same language as you in pre-production, post-production, everything like that, so you all know how to deal with each other. Um, those those troops always do well. Um, comedy in, in Hollywood is a prime example of that. You've got the Seth Rogen clan, you've got the Will Farrell clan, you've got all these different these different troops set up. And in theatre you have Steppenwolf, um, a great theatre company from Chicago that that have uh, being John Malkovich, uh, well being John Malkovich, John Malkovich, and um, and the guy that plays Lieutenant Dan in Forrest Gump. Him and John Malkovich set up a theatre company called Steppenwolf, and they come to London every now and then. And everyone, every time they come, I'm just like, ah, they're amazing. And it just, it's just testament to working together and building networks. And I think that it's really important that that everybody does that, especially, especially like within within the networks that are already established, like Liftoff Global Network, like us, like all the different ones, Sundance Institute, all that kind of thing. These are places where you can meet people. So hopefully if you feel artistically created, uh, artistically connected to people and creatively connected to people, you can reach out to them and say, hey, I saw your film on an online festival. I think we can work together. Let's do something next time. I'm happy to jump on a train and come and see you in Paris or come and see you in Rome or come and see you wherever and make that happen, you know? Um, so yeah, that's really cool. Next time we have to come to Manchester, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to travel back to Manchester in the 90s. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Great.
Great stuff. Okay, well, that's the end of the film that's currently screening the credits. So we'll move we'll move straight on to nine out of ten. So nine sue ten. What's the um, translation of that, Andrea? Uh, the not the translation, but of it in in Italiano. Italiano. In Italiano. Yeah. Nove su dieci. Nine out of ten. Non 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 of fus dieci. Su nove su. Nice. Okay. Si. Great. Great. Okay. <laughs> cool. So so where did the idea come from for this, Andrea? No, I'm not a fantastic director. I'm not a fantastic writer. So I just took my life and got it. It's my life. Years ago, uh, I was with my girlfriend in a supermarket, and we had this big discussion about our future. So I just wrote what happened. With the three writers, the Jacopo del, del Giudice, we just uh, put something new in the story. But it's my life. And now, right. after three years, uh, in that moment, I woke up with my girlfriend because she, <laughs> she was living in Paris. I so really. That's why, that's why my main character, um, the girl one, um, speaks in, in French and then after maybe two months we solved the problem and now we are three. My okay. daughter is, is, is last five months ago. Aww. So the name is Bianca like the name in the short movie. Oh That's congratulations. Yeah, it's meta cinema. In, Ita in Italian, we say meta cinema, something that it's inside your life and then in your cinema. Because I know it, I'm not a fantastic writer, so that's all. This is why I, I, to be honest, and we we talked together before. Uh, I went to the producer with the same story in a dystopic way and they laugh at me like what do you want to do a dystopic film now we are in lockdown and we are living <laughs> in the same situation so I want to speak with the same producer now yeah and so, yeah what story what do you want now of course <laughs> of course fair enough fair enough so it's it's interesting life imitates art right as they say yeah yeah life yeah. definitely imitates art um so tell me, how how did you like on a logistical level? How did you get the supermarket? Did you have to get it at night time? It looks like it was shot at night. Yeah, yeah, we shot during the night, and we, we didn't have uh, much money, so we chose uh, one from the countryside. So yep. we had to travel like one hour and a an half, and then uh, we shot during the the, the normal uh, hour of working. So they work while we shot. So it was, right. uh, what do you say, buona la prima, when, when you have to, uh, when you have just one take to do it, then you have to move because the workers, the workers have to, to work in, yeah. in, in the line. So we shot during the night and I have to say thank to all the crew and the actors because we have a, a child one a fantastic actress named Miriam. Yeah. She was eight maybe at, the, at that time. And she was with us as a director. She's the real <laughs> director of the short movie. Wow. So <laughs> it, it was the, the, the most energetic, energetic one. <laughs> <laughs> she, she directed you. She was the director yeah. of the entire movie. Hey, An eight-year-old no, girl. No. <laughs> Miriam is Farewell. Fantastic. Maybe maybe that's her future career. Who knows? Yeah, Who knows, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, she already um, played a, a small part in a um, film, a future one, named Anna, who won Coppa Murphy in Venice with wow. Charlotte Rampling. So she wants to become an actress for sure. Okay, great. Great, great stuff. And and how did you find the rest of the actors? How did you actually get hold of them? Is there a, a casting call in Italy? Can you use casting websites? Uh, yeah, but not for a short movie. So no. we have a connection. I, I just took the phone and asked for Daniele Parisi. She already played two, 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 two films as a main character. 
So I, as you say, I had to stay around him for three months, asking, hey, do you want to, to do a short movie? At yeah. least he accepted and is my friend now. And Veronica, too, the actress, she was fantastic. I searched for a blonde one who, uh, who can speak in French. So it was like three months, but I. I did just with my first IP, Giulia Fusaroli, so without a classic manager. Great, fantastic, fantastic stuff. So, what, what's the what's the career aspirations then for you, Andrea? What what are you looking to do after this? Uh, after seven years, I finished my first feature, I did a documentary, and I shot um, around Europe, all around Europe, with. As a boxer, and maybe in one year I will finish the movie. The name is Come Rocky as Rocky. Oh, so wow. He, he believes to be Rocky Balboa. Oh, fantastic. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so I shot for seven years when um, the, the little daughter has just one year. So now the daughter is eight years old. So I shot from one to eight. It's a story of a family. Um, wow! I will show you, but I'm very proud of it. Great! And what what's what stage is it at at the moment? We are in post production at the end of editing. Oh, perfect! Uh, perfect for be, perfect time to be in post production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the producer every every day to be to to do it. Yeah, uh, great. Made, uh, oh, excellent. I'm glad I'm pleased I'm pleased to hear that. That's really good news. Um it's it's uh if one of the things that can come out of this is that we're all sat with our computers in front of us and we can all do some editing. So that's good, at least. And we can do some writing and we can do some planning and we can get everything sorted. Hopefully there'll be a big boom in filmmaking after this and uh, and we'll get to see loads more content. It'll be wonderful. Great. Yeah, but so to be honest, I have like three, four pictures in here. You can yeah. see. So produce. <laughs> 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 yeah, if there are any producers watching, definitely. Well, I mean, we're looking to do some production support as well. So, I mean, this is a big shout out to everybody really that's watching this. That's a filmmaker, yourselves included. Um, the Liftoff Global Network is really, really pushing to try and get people's work off the ground and trying to help people um sort of release and re reveal their careers and kind of and kind of when i say re release and reveal i mean like kind of realize their career potential so a lot of the time that the, the the doors seem to be closed there's a lot of nepotism in the industry there's a lots of lots of difficult things that people have come across um i'm sure everybody's come across difficult situations in in their in their careers so far um you guys myself the people in the chat room i'm sure we've all come across these like different difficult hurdles and um the what the biggest thing that really sticks out for me is that is that there are there are definitely people out there that are looking to help people make make the work that they want to make um it's not always about the money sometimes it's about location sometimes it's about getting good actors sometimes it's about just getting a really fantastic script that's lo-fi on on the expense but hi-fi on the on the emotional aspect and the emotional um and artistic intent of the piece and i yeah, think that that's something honest, that lots of people can go honest, for now the problem is how to shoot yes so how keep the production safe so we have to talk about it yeah with producer. so it's a big issue now in italy oh right yeah like in the next two months we are searching to do something to, sh to come back and shoot yes it's not easy. Okay, cool. Well, best of luck to you. Let us know how things are going. If you let, if you, if you can keep in touch with us, Andrea, we'd love to know. We'd love to know what the what the process has been so far and how things are moving forward for you. Um, it's for really, sure. it's really important that we get everybody kind of um, contacting us and telling us how things are going with their pre-production. Um, we want to be having as much screenable work as possible. We don't. We don't like rejecting films. We don't. We never. One of the liftoffs' mottos is that we don't reject filmmakers we'd never reject filmmakers. We may reject films from time to time because we're a festival network and that's the nature of our beast. But if filmmakers reach out to us and say like, how do I get 
to LA with my film? How do I get in front of producers for the Cannes Film Festival? How do I do this? How do I do that? If, if filmmakers have got the right attitude and genuinely want to learn, then we can share with them the, the, the kind of aspects that we've had and the things that have happened for us so far. And if that's, if that's anywhere from like sharing stories and sharing ideas from previous productions that we've noticed have done well, all the way through to introducing you to our producer contacts and even helping you get production support and even giving you production support sometimes we're always there to kind of help with that so yeah very 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 keen to kind of um get that let, message let across me, let me say something of course very proud of the, the screening the, the script of this short movie because for the first time i really um was able to close three acts with two characters Wow. in a short movie so i was so proud of it yeah fantastic it's my first time because I, uh, other times i just shot a sensation something is very small and with uh like yours middle stars you have the um the twist say, the, the, twist the, the, the final the twist. twist yeah for the first time i really wrote something in a short movie 15 minutes so i was so fine and <laughs> it's my first and last time so i had to win something <laughs> ah, nice well congratulations yeah big big applause all around fantastic <laughs> yeah, stuff great. andrea that's great excellent we're just actually getting to the end of your movie now the moment where where everything happens um the decision for yeah. the for the girlfriend to say that she was only joking where where did that decision come from for you as as a, as the writer of this what? what so the girlfriend at the end turns around to him and says oh, oh don't worry i was only joking she said it was just a joke yeah 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 yeah, yeah. for the same uh, thing i i want the feminine character powerful i want yep. uh, who, who can lead the decision okay yeah yeah to me this is uh, my vision of the couple i was the the weak one I, I am the weak one. I mean, uh, <laughs> as a maid, we are the the weak part of the couple. Well, so I'm sure I'm sure you ha I'm sure you bring something to your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let me let me say this is Antonella Battili. She's very famous. She has a role in Nuovo Cinema Paradiso. Uh, yeah. won the, uh, she won the Oscar with this film. So I I was. Um, with these actors, very famous, to have to, to say thanks because they, they came just for one night, they shot with us, and they were so kind with me. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, we're just going literally past the scene now where the, the car drives past and the, the marshmallows are being, uh, are being held outside the, uh, the car as she goes past and she runs back, the little girl here. So she, how old was she? You said she was 80 years old when she filmed this with you. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. What I, a great, I what a, maybe seven or eight, or eight. Yeah. Great. And they say you should never work with children or animals. That's the thing. So you, so you said it was perfect. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. All right. Brilliant. Then, I'm, re I'm really interested in the look. What was the camera that you used for this, for this production? I, I used to shoot with Alexa. Alexia. This is Alexa Studio and but we we did a good job with the art department too the colors yeah and there's a study you see it's yellow for her yeah blue for him and then yeah. they they they're moving now so it's green yeah outside yeah. green so it yeah. was a study of colors but we didn't we didn't have money so i'm so um i i want to put it put this kind of study in a future one okay so, perfect perfect okay great yeah. well it looks it looks very feature sellable without a shadow of a doubt it looks like it would it would look great on a on a laptop in can at the marche de film i can just see you opening a laptop now and showing them it <laughs> It looks it looks good. It looks really good. The eyes are the eyes are bright in your female lead, and the, the the darkness of the male lead, and the fact that she's just saying it now how she how she was joking all along. <laughs> Fantastic yeah. stuff. Really good. Really good subtleties. Really lovely little reveal of the of the real relationship towards the end there. Absolutely fantastic work. Really good, Andrea. Fantastic. So um, so as we as we close off here, then as we go through to the kind of the the uh. The, the closing 
um, section of, of this round table kind of discussion. I just want to kind of get from each of you one by one, um, starting with Pauline, going to Alex and then, then ending with Andrea. Just just what your what your kind of like 10 year plan is, what you what you want to be doing in 10 years. And you can talk for as long as you like or as short as you like. There's no pressure. You can say one word or you can say a thousand a million words. It's totally fine. Uh, but I really I really want to know what your kind of aspirations are for your future work and your future your future in general. So starting with Pauline. Yeah, um, in 10 years, I would like to be a director of feature. Um, but I, I have created a cinema company called uh, All In One Production. So I discover a production um, with uh, this uh, business and uh, producing oh. films enabled me to discover the economic mechanism of movies and i think it's very important to understand this mechanism when you are a director though i would like to be a uh, feature director but uh, i would like to keep a part of the of the movie to to have the control of the production and the direction yeah so yeah. it's my dream i think great fantastic and you alex um, I'd like to uh, work full time as a writer, mm -hmm. um, TV specifically, but also um, I have got a couple of movie ideas, um, but my own work uh, and um, I'd really like to, well the, the work I'm passionate about is northern working class women really, and right. that's, that, they're the kind of shows that I want to keep working on and develop and get and get commissioned but like you were saying before it's really a difficult task yes it is you know, yeah it takes a lot of work a lot yep. of perseverance you've got to keep going yep and it really helps networks for me all of the successes have come through the people i've worked with and i've i've um and i've met through the, the industry good um so i want to keep developing those networks and and um, keep making work um, until I get to to you know be one of the top TV writers in the country. Excellent, excellent. Have you? Yeah, fantastic. Have you, have you sent your scripts to many to many production companies so far? Um, well, I, I got I've got an agent and um, oh good. Yeah, and I've had so far I've only ever had one production meeting in London and okay. it went really really well. But it came down to the wire and they went with a different direction, which is really common. Um, so you've just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself yeah. off, and get on with the yeah. next idea. Well, that's the right attitude. Fantastic. Best of luck to you, Alex. That's great. And 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 uh, Andrea. Uh, it's a huge question. So I just have to say, I have a huge motivation why I'm doing what I'm doing. I studied medicine, so I could work as a doctor, but yeah. my life changed, and. I'm searching for something, so nobody can stop me. <laughs> I know it, it's not about money, it's not about fame, it's about my motivation, and I already wrote something about this. I'm ready to do it in five years, 10 years 20 years. I don't care. Excellent. Excellent. You sound very focused, and Andrea. That sounds great. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well... I have, I have an, a daughter, so you know. Oh yeah. So yeah. I will. You got to do it now. Doctor, yeah, got to do it now. Now that you got kids, that's how it works. Yeah, you, know. you feel you feel the burden. <laughs> <laughs> it's very real um okay great well i would I, i'd like to open it up to the chat room now to see if any of you guys have got any questions for, for you guys i think we had a few questions flying in so i'll have a quick little look but um let's let's reconvene in 10 years time and see where you guys are and what you're doing um see if you're uh see in 10 years from now what it will be 20 24 no 2030 2040 2030 so in 2030 10 years from now flipping neck i'll be 48 oh my god nearly 49 and uh yeah we'll see where we are hopefully my child will be able to be quiet at that point when we do the stream <laughs> i doubt it <laughs> all right great so let's have a look in the chat room and see what people are saying let's have a little look so um we've got lots of people saying really enjoyed it's uh, some lovely things people saying it's great for us to develop crafts and things um i think we had a little we had a little um 
we had a little comment earlier on from Claire. I think she was asking about how the script came into your hands, Pauline. But you, um, the, the script, you said that it was something that you guys had worked on together, wasn't it? The troupe. Is that right? Pauline? Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, maybe I went a bit too fast there. Sorry. So the, um, we had a question earlier on from Claire Richardson, yeah. who asked, uh, did Pauline come across this script? And how did she collaborate with the, uh, with the writer, with Paul the writer? What was the collaboration process like? Yeah, um, the the script writer uh, called uh, Louis Paul, yep. and um, for the organization, we we he the the two script writers had uh, some uh, genre uh, and uh, some uh, different sets, but one casting, and um, after a few. Uh, days, um, we the scriptwriter of the first days work um, alone, and after we began uh, with um, Louis to introduce some staging uh, in the in the script, so it was a um, collaboration um, with. Uh, little uh, in director intervention yeah. so yeah. Uh, i'm not a script writer and uh, it's uh, probably a french trend mm -hmm. to think a director and script writer are the same are the same job but in french is very um, is very current uh, that uh, is not two people but uh, one uh, one person for the for the two job, um, but uh, I think it's uh, two different jobs. So it was the we we work uh, in that direction. So I read uh, a script, and after I began to say, okay, that uh, scene is interesting. So yeah. can can we make uh, this uh, this staging? Uh, uh, what do you think about that? And uh, we. We work uh, like that to 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 have the to have the final uh, the final script. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. And we've got another another thing in here from Sarah Meyer. She's saying nine out of ten was interesting watching the couple discuss, consider, and adapt to the possibilities around having a family felt real. Not everyone reacts as expected, and El and Elsa was so cute. <laughs> so that's yeah, good to see. We know. We know. Yeah, Deep it's great. Um, how long did the how long did the produ the production take for nine out of ten? This is from Zadok Donko uh, like Yibo. Three, four months. Three or four, four months. months. Great. Yeah, like we shot in three days, and I just I was the executive, and I organized with Kira Pillo, so we are we were just two. Very easy. Okay, great. So, three months. Great, great. Uh, Lucas has got a film. Uh, uh, Lucas Durat Films has asked, "Hey James, I'd like to know about each of them. What were their inspirations? Like famous directors or storytellers, for example? Would you like to answer one of those? Should we start with Alex. Go to Pauline and then Andrea. Your your biggest inspirations, the famous directors or storytellers. Okay, a good uh, question. Great question. I uh, a writer that I really like is um, Sally Wainwright. I don't know if you've heard of Sally Wainwright. Um, she did Happy Valley, uh, yep. Gentleman Jack, um, At Home of the Braithwaites. Um, I really liked a lot of Paul Abbott's early stuff. Yeah. Um, Jimmy McGovern, uh, The Streets, so sort of gritty northern. <laughs> oh yeah, northern northern uh, bleak grit. I really, I, I love a lot of um, Mike Lee stuff. Oh yeah. Secrets and Lies is one of my favourite films. It's excellent. Um, Brett Secret Secrets and Lies was all in, improvised, wasn't it? It was improvised. Well, it, actually, it was based on a family story. Wow. And apparently, when he he finished the film, he got the family together in a, in a cinema to watch it all because that adoption story was part of his extended family story. Wow. The basis wow. of it, yeah. Wow, fantastic. And what about you, Pauline? Your your inspirations? Um. It's not very original, but uh, I think I would like to. Uh, 
When I discovered um, Citizen Ken of Austin Wales, uh, I thought in my head, okay, I would uh, would like to to make a film. Uh, but for this movie, it's probably more um, Terence Malik and uh, yep. absolutely all uh, all their films. Um, I am so 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 fan of this uh, on, on his work. Um, he and uh, they he he worked with the stage and uh, he worked with the character and uh, um, I thought it uh, I think it's a very beautiful uh, work. So. I think it's my main uh, inspiration for for nearby memories. Great, great. Yeah, I highly recommend people to check out Citizen Kane. Absolutely excellent film. And yeah, um, Yeah. it's on it's on Amazon Prime, maybe. Is it on Amazon Prime? Really? Yeah. yeah, Like. Wow. Fantastic. It's it's great. It's still it's still a really good film. This it's um, I kind of came I came to cinema very late in my life. Weirdly enough, I say cinema, I mean like cinema, cinema, you know, like proper, proper cinephile cinema. And uh, and I can't believe how fantastic the classics are. They are absolutely excellent. Citizen Kane is really good. I really love um, what's the I love the uh, the film that Stanley Kubrick's second film, Barry Lyndon. Flipping brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love all of those sort of films where they they go deep, deep, deep into the character and you see you see the character just go they just take a huge yeah. nosedive and it just destroys i love how a character can get destroyed <laughs> it's great how to destroy a character with james bradley um yeah it's really really good um okay cool and uh let's see andrea what's your your biggest inspiration i don't know when i was three years old my parents took me to the cinema and yeah. i i watched dune of david lynch so from that moment maybe something changed in my life and when I was 14, they saw me watch Nanni Moretti. Nanni Moretti is an important director in Italy, so maybe something there's in my mind. Mm-hmm. And then for this movie, out of 10, um, there's something about, about French directors like Francois Zon or Jean-Pierre Junet. I, wow. There's something about delicatessen in, in it. Fantastic. It's me. No, no, I... I I tell you now, I can watch Dune over and over and over and over again. It's my favourite sci-fi. I love it. I love the book. I love, I love the fact that Denis Villeneuve is making a new one. Oh, I can't wait for that. It's such a great story. Such a great story. And, and magical. Crazy. Amazing. So now you are like waiting for the new oh yeah i can't wait dennis villeneuve is like my favorite favorite director at the moment i love the new blade runner i loved yeah he's amazing he's amazing and and i I loved i loved arrival and all of his early stuff is excellent the how it looks i mean the still suits the the, just the the whole thing about june is just so magical i can't wait have you seen jodorowsky's june the documentary jodorowsky's june yeah, yeah fantastic. very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Great documentary. Um, highly recommend it. Um, so but, I've got Sarah, Sarah Mize is asking another question, though. Uh, Andrea, do you want to finish your point? Sorry, finish your point, Andrea. Sorry. No, no, no. Just you know, uh, if Denis Villeneuve shot a short movie called maybe The Last Floor, it was fantastic as we are doing the same movie. The short movies. Now on Netflix, there's the picture one name uh, and it's quite the same like from the idea of the evil nev in the last floor they made a feature one wow they are doing something important with the wow movies. it's the beginning wow fantastic fantastic great and uh, so sarah myers has a question saying as the only non-filmmaker here i think in brackets do you have any advice for people who are just starting out or considering filmmaking uh, Alex, we'll start with you, then we'll go to Pauline, then we'll go to Andrea. Um, try to keep your answer as short as possible because we're, we're on the edge of time now. We're on the very edge of time. But yes, go for it, Alex. Uh, I'd just try and connect with um, other filmmakers, see what's going on in your local area. 
Um, it depends what aspect you want to do uh, yeah. of it. If you want to write, um, the, for example, in Manchester, there's lots of writing ne networks that you can link into. Yep. Um, yep. And a lot of people, as a writer, are really keen to make, they're looking for scripts all the time. So yeah. you can yeah. get your work made. Um, but for nothing, with no budget, particularly if it's like a five-minute short film. So I just keep trying to link into all the networks in your area, but figure out which element you want to do first. Great, great, on. great. And Pauline, any advice? Um, I say uh, that I am saying uh, with my um, uh, studio, uh, make film. Just, just that. Uh, it's uh, very, very short, but I think it's uh, the principle uh, do and uh, not to uh, not be afraid to to make mistakes because uh, uh, in the future we look for the mistakes because yep. The, yep. the mistakes will uh, will discover your art inspiration you don't be an um, an atmosphere if you never make mistakes so yeah what well, um, I, I think it's uh, it's good definitely fail to prepare prepare to fail but always always fail fail and fail again you yeah know? it's the only way you learn <laughs> only way you learn yeah definitely and fail gloriously yeah. that's one of the things that the jodorowsky's dune was all about which um if anybody's interested in filmmaking it's a great filmmaker documentary um it's all about the greatest failure that ever happened and how failure yeah. is something that really helps inspire the future of your of your work 100 percent. so andrea any any thoughts or feelings or or uh, inspirational bits of advice you'd like to give to our fellow yeah. starter routers <laughs> Yeah, what I every day say to me. So keep going, watch movies, yeah. be yourself. Nice. That's all. Excellent. Watch movies. Watch movies. A lot of watch movies. movies. Yeah, watch a lot of movies. Yep. Oh, shucks. Got to watch a lot of movies. Never mind. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. I'm going to end the stream right here. Thank you so much to everyone in the chat room. You guys have been brilliant. It's so good to see such a vibrant chat. We're at some really good high viewing, high viewing numbers now. So it's fantastic to see that you guys all come here to support these fantastic filmmakers today. And a round of applause for these guys. Thank you so much, Andrea, Pauline and Alex for coming today. It's been great. And uh, yeah, I hope. Yeah, thank you. Oh, no problem at all. My absolute pleasure. Take care, guys, and very best of luck, and we will end the stream right here. There we go. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.